Today we're going to take a look back at last year's New York Comic Con Funko exclusives to see how they're trending a near full year later in price. And you guys are definitely going to want to stick around for this. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel for our annual Where Are They Now? New York Comic Con Edition video. Today we're going to be taking a look at most of last year's exclusives to see how they are trending almost a full year later in terms of value. But first off, I want to address an elephant in the room. It's been brought to my attention by several of our viewers and some good friends of the channel. I kind of knew this was already happening, but I want to thank everybody who reached out this past Monday to let me know and confirm that this was indeed happening. So if you guys caught Monday's video, I talked about some Funko Pops and a soda that I think you guys should buy before they potentially go up in price. And one of the items that I specifically mentioned in the video with a very short list of only a few Funko Pops was the Walgreens exclusive Spider-Man Noir with the hat. Now, interestingly enough, when I put out the video, this pop was currently valued at $80 over on Pop Price Guide via the HobbyDB database. For those of you guys who don't know, that is where 99% of all collectors get the values for any single item that Funko makes. And at the time of filming, it was valued at $80. After the video got put out, only a few hours later, several people brought it to my attention that that value of the pop in the database on PPG had been updated and it now showed a new current value of $41. So it had been updated, not by just one price point, but somebody actually went in and added eight new price points to have the value now reflect half of what it was when I was talking about it in the video. And I'm not arguing the price points. I actually went in and validated every single price point myself and it, it is true that the pop is selling for around $40 to $45 and not $80. But you guys will see as we go through this video, I'm going to expand on some more issues that I've discovered within the HobbyDB database. So without further ado, let's get into the first New York Comic Con exclusive that we're going to be talking about. That was a popular one from last year, 2023. First up, we have from Bleach. This is the Soul Reaper Ichigo and the con sticker is still pretty expensive right now as it's currently going for around $100 while the shared sticker is currently trending for only $17 and interestingly enough this was a very popular anime pop out of the gate and it was selling for well over $200 so if you waited till now to pick one up you'll be saving about $100 but if you don't care about the sticker you can pick up the shared one for pretty much retail. Another anime pop that we had last year which I thought was trending more in price, and it actually isn't, is Inuasha. This was a Toy Tokyo exclusive. Uh, when it first came out of the gate here last year, around this time, it was selling for around $55 for the con sticker. However, the con sticker is currently valued at $22, while the shared sticker is currently valued at $23. And this is the first issue that I want to point out with the HobbyDB data uh, database when it comes to... New York Comic Con or any con exclusive pop. This shared sticker should, not always, but should be worth less than the con sticker version of whatever exclusive because you have fewer con stickers available on the marketplace because Funko just makes fewer con stickers compared to shared stickers. And you kind of see this a lot with a lot of con exclusive pops within Pop Price Guide. So I think this is something that needs to be reflected in terms of Inuasha here. Either the con sticker value is a little bit undervalued than what it's actually selling for, or the shared sticker is a little bit overvalued in terms of its current value and it's actually selling for less. I believe the latter and that the shared sticker is actually worth closer to retail value and it's actually selling for less than the con sticker rather than vice versa. Next up, let's talk about, without a doubt, the hottest pop. The biggest exclusive from last year's New York Comic Con, the Monkey D. Luffy wanted poster from One Piece. This is still a very expensive pop, and it's very interesting here what we have to work with with the data points that were provided. So, the con sticker is currently trending for $260, while the shared sticker is going for 
$50 right out of the gate around this time last year. The con sticker version of this pop was selling for over $350, which is crazy, but at the same time, so are One Piece collectors. They are crazy for certain characters, Luffy being the main character. A lot of people desperately wanted this pop, especially with the con sticker. Now, the shared sticker is interesting here because the shared sticker is currently valued at 55, although unlike the regular, regular trajectory graphs that we've seen where pop is dropped on the market, it is very expensive, and then it slowly comes down over time, this one was actually selling for around $50 out of the gate, and then you guys can see it actually rose at the beginning of this year, and it was selling for upwards of $80, and I think that's due to the fact that people just did not want to go out and spend 200 plus dollars on the con sticker so they essentially gave up on hunting the con sticker and they said you know what i'm gonna go try to grab the shared sticker i don't care about the sticker i just want that pop for my collection to keep my one piece collection complete thus that's why you see the bump in the shared sticker pricing however that was just a little bump in the timeline here as the shared sticker has now come back down to that 50 to 55 dollar mark Next up, let's talk about the one Star Wars pop that we got last year, and I thought this was a lackluster Star Wars exclusive for New York Comic Con. Had I known that John from the future was going to come visit me and tell me that it was going to get a lot worse for New York Comic Con 2024, I would have been shocked. And now, looking at this Darth Maul with his robotic legs, I think this is actually a pretty good <laughs> New York Comic Con Star Wars exclusive because the bar has been brought down that much. But nonetheless, Darth Maul here with the con sticker is currently going for $60 while the shared sticker is going for about $21. I think that's pretty fair considering there's a lot of Darth Maul pops on the market. This next pop is where things get very, very interesting for a variety of reasons. So the next pop we're actually going to be talking about is... One of the ones that turns out to be a sleeper of last year's New York Comic Con, and that is the McNugget. He's dressed up as a Frankenstein sort of McNugget, and he's got his little Halloween pails in front of him. Super cute pop. Ad Icon fans were excited. McDonald's fans were definitely excited to get this pop. It's just... Wow, they are very ecstatic about this pop, and a lot of people went out and grabbed it for its for their collection because this one is currently valued for $46 if you have the con sticker and $55 if you have the shared. Now, once again, you have that inaccurate pricing with the con versus shared. In the case of the con sticker McNugget here, I would actually venture to say that the con sticker is valued around 60 to 65 while the shared sticker is pretty accurate, valued around $55. And this one is interesting because we haven't gotten a lot of Ad Icons pops, haven't gotten a lot of McDonald's pops, even though when they initially came out with them, they came out with a lot of them. And I think this just hits the nail on the head for a lot of collectors. It's perfect for Halloween, even if you're not an Ad Icons collector. But there's a lot of red flags when you start to peel back the layers of this hobby db listing with all the data that's provided first off there is a listing from two years ago and apparently this pop sold for 15 dollars just think about that for a quick second this 2023 exclusive to new york comic-con pop sold two years ago for 15 dollars not possible. So right there, that data point should be axed from the timeline. That should be thrown out. A 2023 exclusive hadn't even been made. It hadn't even been thought of yet by Funko a year prior in 2022. So right there is the first big red flag. So that to me shows you that you have some data points that are being put into these listings that are not being verified. They're not being checked and they also don't make sense. So that's a big thing that I wanted to point out with this pop, and you'll see some more inconsistencies like this as we keep going on through our slate here. Next up, we have the Harley Quinn winking from the DC Universe. Now, even though it seems like there's been a lot of demand and more hype in the DC Universe nowadays, barring that Joker 2 movie that apparently just bombed in the box office, you would expect that this pop would be trending 
fairly decent. Um, however, it is not. The Constiker version of Harley Quinn Winky here is currently trending for $17, while the shared sticker value doesn't even have a value currently on Hobby DB. Some of you guys are gonna go to Harley Quinn's page today and you will see that for this shared sticker, if you see next to the physical picture of the sticker, it says $20 with a little red triangle with an exclamation point. If you hover over that little red triangle, it says that this $20 estimate is actually based on members estimates and not actual sales. How on earth do you not have actual sales to go off of for this pop when you've had a year to gather that information? And we're not even talking about the rare sticker version of this pop. We are talking about the shared sticker version of this pop. There was probably five shared sticker Harley Quinn winking pops that were sold in the last week over on Whatnot or Macari or eBay or whatever you know uh, platform you want to go to to go get your data. So the fact that a member, somebody who works for HobbyDB or somebody who volunteers for HobbyDB has made that $20 estimate is just bogus without actually doing the legwork and going out and finding just one. You just have to find one data point to actually start off the value for this pop and then you put in more values all more data points as you go to then correct or you know influx or deflux the value of the pop the other thing that's very weird about this once again is why would you value this pop at more than the con sticker once again huge red flag major inconsistency something that needs to be addressed immediately and the biggest thing is because now hobby db a month ago came out to the community and asked everybody for their support support that me as a collector i was happy to give because this is something that i use every single day I don't just use this for my own personal collection. I also use this for our business. And on top of that, I also use this to provide better content for you guys here on the channel. So I am somebody that's using this database arguably three times more than your average collector. However, HobbyDB came out and said, hey, to everybody, you, uh, to everybody, whether you use this uh, database a lot, whether you use it a little, or whether you use it an average amount, we would like to get $30 a year Year from you to support us to put money into this database. Well, now we are paying customers of HobbyDB. I expect the service to be better. At the bare minimum, every single pop should have at least one data point. One entry, give me a base price for every single pop, especially a pop that's been out for at least a year. Next up, let's move on to the owl bear, the white fur and feathers owl bear from Dungeons and Dragons. This one. This is another. I had to talk about this really quick. This is actually a pretty cool pop, by the way. The Dungeons and Dragons line is very underrated, and this was a great entry into that line for New York Comic Con last year. This listing is so messed up, we don't even have a graph. So we have three sales that were inputted for this pop. So credit to whoever put in those three sales. Um, currently valued at $29 for the con sticker, valued at $22 for the shared sticker. However, if you go to the listing page here for the con sticker, you don't even get a graph. I think at the bare minimum, you should at least get a graph. Um, <laughs> another thing that I wanted to point out with this pop, it says that there was only three sales of this particular pop with the con sticker. I actually did my own research and uh, decided to go find a few more sales for this specific pop to see if that $29 con sticker value was in fact actually accurate. And mind you that to get these three sales, it took me about 10 minutes. So looking on eBay, on September 3rd, this pop sold for $34.90. August 25th, it also sold for $29.99 with the best offer accepted. Unfortunately with eBay, if there's a best offer accepted, you don't see the exact value that the price was accepted at. So I would venture to say $25, probably somewhere in there. And then on July 25th, this sold for $33.99. That was all in the last three months. Took me 10 minutes to do for the con sticker version of this pop. The last captured price point for this pop was March 14th. Unacceptable, in my opinion. Next up, let's talk about 
some limited pieces. Last year we got several limited pieces and I know a lot of people are very worried about the limited pieces that are going to be uh, released for this year's New York Comic Con and rightfully so because without a doubt the limited pieces that we're getting this year are way better than the ones that we got last year. But let's take a brief minute here and talk about the values for some of those limited pieces that we got last year. First up, the Blacklight Freddy Bones limited to a thousand pieces. So this was con only, you couldn't buy this on the website, you had to travel to New York Comic Con and actually buy this one in person. This one is currently valued at $130. When it first hit the market it was going for around $270 to $280 and now it's down to $130. Still a very cool pop. I think the Freddy Bones mold is one of the best Freddy molds that Funko has ever done with the skeleton face and the mask off to the side. I think simply the reason that this pop has gone down so much is just based on blacklight fatigue. I think a lot of people are kind of over blacklight. I actually love this pop. I have it over here on my display. I actually pulled it in a mystery box. One of the few grails that we've ever pulled in a mystery box and I absolutely love it. I tried to get it when we were at New York Comic Con last year. Wasn't able to because people were asking in the neighborhood of $300. Next up, let's talk about the non-limited piece Freddy Bones. Once again, incredible mold. Funko did a really good job. This version was just the more basic version and there was a con sticker and a shared sticker version of this pop. And I think another reason that that blacklight pop is valued at only $130 is because you do have an ulterior option to pick up the regular Freddy Bones instead of spending over $100 on the blacklight one. The regular one here, con sticker is going for 21, shared sticker is going for 13. Now, once again, you have a very strange graph. So unlike the owl bear where there's no graph, this one you actually get a graph, but this one is not a graph at all. This is literally just a box. You have a price point for $70 and then it just goes all the way across to the right hand portion of your screen and then immediately drops to $26. These are not the graphs that we should be getting. This is not accurately reflecting the data that somebody is taking time to put in. So I don't know if this is an algorithm issue or if this is just like some sort of systematic issue, but this is not a graph, this is just a box reflecting numbers that do actually have some good merit behind them. And $21 is actually a fair assessment for this pop. Next up, continuing talking about the limited pieces. The other limited pieces that we got last year were actually the uh, mascots that we got for the Heavy Metal Halloween box that was released. Once again, at the time of recording this video, it looks like there is going to be no sort of Freddy box, no Halloween box of fun this year, which is definitely a bummer. However, we did get some really cool thousand piece glow in the dark mascot pops from New York Comic Con last year. We'll start off with Jack Carver. They were all glow in the dark. Jack Carver is currently valued at $50. These were con only pops, no shared sticker version of course because it was a limited piece. When it first hit the market it was selling for over $100 and now it's down to 50. However, there is something very bizarre once again if you peel back the layers of the data for this pop. And I think I discovered another thing that should have been verified, it should have been tossed out of this graph. And it's something that's unfortunately consistent with all four of the glow in the dark mascots. Once again, we have a data point that raises an eyebrow because if you look, it says that there was a sale two years ago. Once again, how does a 2023 pop have a sale recorded from 2022? And it's not just any old sale, by the way. It is a $400 sale. So this is a monumental price point that's going to drastically impact the value of this pop, especially right out of the gate. So I scrolled down, took me a little bit of, you know, a little bit of time to do my research here. It turned out to be an eBay sale. Of course, when you click on the listing, the eBay listing is no longer live. It's lost in the ether, so you can't even see if it's a legit sale or not. However, it's not in fact from two years ago. It was in fact recorded on September 19th, 2023. Okay, not two years ago, so it could just be a little glitch right there. But when you look at the listing ever so closely, you realize it's not even actual picture of the pop. It is a glam shot of the Jack Carver glow in the dark pop. This same exact sale has been captured for Fildy Graves, Rusty Steel, and Sid Fishes, the other four glow in the dark mascot pops. And I think that this needs to be axed from all four of these listings because my best guess is that somebody put up a pre-order 
for all four of the glow in the dark mascot pops with glam shots, not actual pictures, and allowed somebody to buy the whole listing for four hundred dollars. And I would imagine that they got all four of these pops and not one for four hundred dollars because. That just does not make sense. It's not consistent with all the other sales data that we have, and it's something that needs to be looked into further. Next up, let's talk about Phil D. Graves really quick. Phil D. Graves was arguably the best mascot of the four. I feel like it was the one that a lot of people were trying to go after, and it is ridiculously cool, especially the glow-in-the-dark version. This one is another thing that I want to point out a red flag. So the most recent sale, oh, by the way, this one is currently valued at $85, which overall is accurate. The most recent sale for this one is coming in May 10th of this year. Kind of weird. We haven't gotten a sale recorded since May 10th. Okay, we'll just go along with that. However, if you look at the listing here for the May 10th sale, if you click on the eBay listing, of course, it doesn't exist anymore. However, just in the title, it says in parentheses, not mint. Are we factoring in listings that aren't mint? And if you actually zoom in on the picture, you can see some pretty significant damage for this pop. Now this pop, even though it wasn't mint, it still sold for $75. However, if you look at the listing prior to that, this pop sold for a hundred. And in fact, there are several sales for this pop over a hundred dollars in the last few months. So are we factoring in non mint pops into the overall value for a pop for everyone's collection? Because I don't think that that is actually fair. Why should the value of a pop drop by $25 because someone decided to sell a not mint one. Does that mean now my mint one on the shelf that I paid $100 for is now worth 75 because somebody else across the country or across the world sold a damaged one for $25 less? Honestly, selling the damaged one for $25 less sounds accurate to the value of a damaged one. That should not be factored into the overall value of a mint pop. And unfortunately, I saw this, had to bring it up because I feel like it's another inconsistency that needs to be addressed within the Hobby DBB, Hobby DB marketplace. Next up, really quick, we'll talk about Rusty Steel. He's going for about $55. Another red flag with his listing on the graph right here is apparently he was valued at $190 on June 19th of this year. How on earth was a data point captured for $190 and then the value a month later was brought back down to 55? Once again, the graph is just all messed up on that one. And then the last one here is Sid Ficious, who actually has an incredible glow and is super cool. He's valued at $44. And um, this one was selling for actually quite a bit right out of the gate. It was going for around 125 to 145. And I think it's simply because of that glow. That glow is just hands down the best glow out of all four of the pops. But another thing that I want to point out really quickly, and it kind of circles back to my main frustration right now as a collector here in the community and somebody who wants the most accurate price points for my collection and everybody else's collection out there is if you look at Sid Fishes here, we have a price that was captured. Apparently somebody sold one of these, the thousand piece glow in the dark Sid Fishes for $14.99. $14.99. Somebody sold this for retail apparently on April 24th of this year back in eBay. Okay, maybe it was damaged, maybe it, it wasn't, maybe somebody just wanted to get it out of their house and they said, I will literally take $15 for it, just get it out, which also sounds very strange in itself. However, if you look at the previous price point, we have $75, $80, $53, all captured in October of last year. So how do we go from October to April, six month span, no sales, and then the value goes from 75 way down to 35 because of that one $15 sale. I think another big thing that has to be addressed with the values of our pops, and I think that's why so many people messaged me about the Spider-Man Noir pop this past Monday, is because we're seeing these graphs that aren't really graphs with trends. They're just data point and then boom, data point all the way down. Where in reality, if you have data points being put into the system for every single one of these pops every few weeks or even heck once a month, you will see the pops slowly rise. You know, when they first hit the market, of course, you're gonna see that huge spike 
and then you should most of the time see them slowly come down and then flatline. Or you should see them drop for retail at $15. Maybe they'll slowly increase in price as time goes on and demand goes up and supply goes down. Maybe there'll be a big spike when Robert Downey Jr. decides to announce that he's coming back as Dr. Doom. And then you'll see the pops kind of level back out once again. Unfortunately, we don't have that. We have all these wild graphs where you have people going in and updating the pops and then all of a sudden, people log into their pop price guide account and they see their pops fluctuating so drastically, it causes people here in the community to get upset and get frustrated when in reality, a lot of these pops just haven't been updated in so long, whether they need to be higher or lower, it's just, it's providing data that is cause for concern here in the community because we're not getting consistent data over time. I wanna round out this video really quick by just talking about a few more exclusives. I'm not going to be covering every single exclusive that dropped last year because unfortunately, some of these exclusives just don't have any data points and I unfortunately just don't have the time to go through every single 2023 New York Comic Con exclusive from last year, cross-reference data points from every single uh, buying or selling platform because I don't work for HobbyDB. I'm happy to do it every now and then and uh, I encourage whoever is watching our videos to continue to pay attention to the items that I am talking about so the values can get updated properly with more accurate prices. However, I can't do it for every single pop. The next item that I'm gonna briefly talk about really quick is the Might Guy. This was the diamond 4,000 piece exclusive that came with the lounge fly bag. This one is another weird one because it's really hard to capture accurate data for this because this came with the lounge fly bag. And a lot of people on the, uh, you know, on your various different marketplaces, Macari, whatnot, eBay, they, most of the time sell the pop without the bag and some people sell the pop with the bag and however the listings here on HobbyDB don't differentiate which listing has the bag, which listing doesn't have the bag and I think you really need to separate those when you have a multi-piece exclusive. So it says the con sticker is going for around 140, shared sticker is going for around 80. I think it should be less because I don't think that that con sticker pop is selling for $140 on its own. I think it's selling for about that much with that exclusive lounge fly bag. Next up, I wanna talk about the Toxic Avenger. This was also a popular one. And this one does have a little bit of value to it with the con sticker currently valued at 33 and the shared sticker valued at 20. The other Marvel exclusive that we got last year, I thought was actually a pretty good one, the Goblin Queen from the X-Men line. This could be one that you wanna keep your eyes on in the years to come. This one unfortunately is not going for very much as the con sticker is currently valued at 20 while the shared sticker is only going for around 10. Next up we have the Dark Magician Girl from Yu-Gi-Oh! She was a Toy Tokyo exclusive. She's going for 33 with the con sticker and then you have unfortunately that shared sticker problem once again where the shared sticker is valued at 34 which is more than the con sticker. And then the last pop that I wanted to mention was No Heart with the book from the Care Bears line. This I think is actually a really good one to go grab right now because they are releasing a new Care Bear for New York Comic Con 2024 with the Share Bear. Unfortunately I can't give you any data on this one because there isn't even anything in HobbyDB regarding this pop. So uh, we're gonna end it there with my New York Comic Con look back and I'm gonna give you guys a couple things to just wrap your head around as we move into New York Comic Con next week. And we are actually going to New York Comic Con. I am very excited about New York Comic Con and I'm very much looking forward to seeing a lot of you guys there. So if you happen to see myself or Joanna, please, Come say hi if you'd like to. We'd love to meet you guys in person, you know, match usernames with real life names and faces. We love going to New York Comic Con. But there's going to be a lot of really exciting limited pieces dropping next week. A lot of them are going to be exclusive to New York Comic Con. So those people that are gonna be waiting in line to get those limited pieces are then going to be taking them and posting them on Whatnot, Macari, eBay. And they're likely going to go for a lot of money initially, especially the flocked animal with the drums. The Funko Fusion Pops are very limited. They're going to be very expensive. And I would encourage you guys that if you want one or multiples of these pops for your collection to only spend what you think is a fair value for these pops and also you know stick within your budget i think some of these pops will go down a little bit over the next 12 months i hesitate to say all because 
Those 500 piece Funko Fusion Pops are going to be extremely difficult to get. And those may be ones that are expensive out of the gate. They might dip briefly and then they might go back up because Funko Fusion could just get more and more popular. A lot more people could start playing the game. And I think that's just a little caveat niche pop line that could have a lot of value down the road because those pops or two of them at least are limited to only 500 pieces but at the end of the day don't give in to FOMO if you really want something but you see something is selling for more than you're willing to pay just wait there's a good chance that something that you want will come down in price 90 percent of the con exclusives whether they're limited or not, like you guys saw in this video, like you guys have seen in my previous videos, after that 90 day window, that three to six month mark is the perfect time to buy. So come January, February, you're gonna be looking at a lot of these pops coming down in value and being within very reasonable price ranges for you to go out and grab for your collection. Another thing that I want to point out really quick, because I know somebody's going to call me out in the comments section, last year we did get eight soda exclusives for New York Comic Con 2023. I did not talk about any of those sodas today because I actually have another soda video in the works, so I'm just addressing that now. That's why I didn't talk about any of the sodas because I have a, a bit, another big video in the works that I want to further discuss what's going on with sodas. Ultimately, the conclusion of this video, I do appreciate that people from HobbyDB are paying attention to our videos and our content. However, with a lot of the listings that I showed in today's video, we found a lot of issues and I brought up a lot of things that I think desperately need to be addressed. So I think it's time that HobbyDB steps up their game. The community has stepped up and I know that hundreds if not thousands of people have pledged the $30 or $5 a month or whatever tier that you've chosen to go with to support HobbyDB because we want to see HobbyDB and Pop Price Guide be successful. But to be successful, you have to provide collectors here in the Funko community, aka now your customers, with accurate data so we know the true value of our collectibles. Because it's important, because we need to know how much a certain item is at any given point in time so we know how much to expect to spend on it if we want to buy it for our collection and vice versa. We need to know how much it's worth in case we want to go sell something to use that money for whatever you need that money for. So I really think it's time that HobbyDB, we need to address these inconsistencies and we definitely need to give every single pop at least one price point. If there's a member or several members who work for HobbyDB and if they can find time to input eight different price points for Spider-Man Noir within hours of me dropping our video, then I think it's very appropriate and more than adequate of them to find eight different pops that don't have any price point and give them at least one data entry. So guys, that's gonna do it for today's video. We will be live tonight on Professor Josh's channel for Pop Force One if he has power and hopefully he's okay with the hurricane. Speaking of that, I know this is a very tough day for a lot of people and a lot of collectors here in the community down south. So if you are in the wrath of Hurricane Milton, please do your best to stay safe. Um, shelter in place. Please follow all the advice and instructions given by the state of Florida and all the governing authorities. We don't want anything to happen to everybody. And um, just at the end of the day, safety is your number one priority. Possessions, collectibles, all of that can be replaced. You, your family, your pets cannot. So please stay safe. As always, guys, let me know what you thought of this video. Smash the like button if you enjoyed it. I want to hear everybody's comments in the or opinions in the comment section down below. And as always, don't stop shooting until you score. <laughs> <laughs>